Hey, it's Mark Podolsky at The Land Geek with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And this week's podcast guest is going to take us all through tax lien investing to build wealth. I'm very excited about it. We have not had a, a tax lien investor on in quite a while. However, I'd be remiss if I didn't properly introduce my co-host. You know him. You love him. Scott Todd. ScottTodd.net. Landmodo.com. If you're not automating your Craigslist and your Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Learn anything about anything. Investor ninjas.com. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm great. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. Just a little reminder today's podcast is sponsored by Flight School. If you want to go up the mountain of land investing, have Scott Todd be your Sherpa, the brain, the professor. He'll take you up there quickly, efficiently, safely. Over 16 weeks, learn more. Just go to landgeek.com forward slash training and see how flight school can literally transform your life. Today's guest is Melanie Finnegan. If you're not familiar with Melanie, she is the uh, person that manages the daily operations of her company, TaxLeanWealthSolutions.com. She handles the portfolio management, portfolio consulting. She's been investing educating and assisting clients in becoming successful in the tax lien investing industry for over 10 years. And um, she's also the founder and CEO of Tax Lien Wealth Solutions. Melanie Finnegan, welcome. Hey, thanks so much, you guys. How are you today? You know what? I got to say, Pulse is still normal. Respiration is <laughs> fine. I can't complain, Melanie Finnegan. That's awesome. So, Melanie Finnegan, of all the real estate niches, why tax lien investing? Oh, you would ask that one, right? Um, so I did it because I was 12 years ago faced with uh, just, it, you know, personal, I was going through a divorce, needed a job kind of thing. And I found the, I happened upon a company that was near my home and um, connected with them. And they taught me about tax liens. I'd never heard of them in my life. And I fell in love with the investment process. So um, my son's involved in it now. He was, gosh, I think 10 at the time. Yeah. Or eight at the time I started there. Gosh, he's 21 now. Um, but he, you know, we just, I just dug in and learned everything I could about it. I, I quickly advanced, became a certified tax lien professional with the certification um, and created some strat like strategic moves and things like that, that I saw was assisting and helping people as an alternative asset class. You know, that they're we're making money with their 401ks and self-directed IRAs and I fell in love with it. So it's kind of a Cinderella story, if you will. Okay. Scott, Todd, what are your thoughts? Well, Mark, uh, as, as you know, I'm not sure if the listeners know or not, but you know it like, uh, before I was doing uh, land investing, I was doing some tax lien investing and, to this day, I still do some tax lien investing and it's, it's, I like it, right? Like I've always liked it. Um, I will admit the, the yields are not as high as what I get on my land. It could be depending on the right play, but essentially it really is like, you know, you, you do the work one time and you put it over here on the shelf and uh, it comes to you. What I don't like about it is that I really don't, control when I get paid off, right? Like to some extent, it's not, uh, there's not a lot of liquidity to it. And that's the one thing that like, I gotta be careful because I will geek out on that. And um, it's really about the, the data behind it too. So I'll geek out on it, but man, it is nice having some predictable income as well. So maybe Melanie can solve that problem for me. Melanie, can you, can you solve the problem? Oh, yes, and Scott, no, no uh, offense to you or anything like that. Sounds to me you know just enough to get in trouble. Um, maybe. So, yeah, and maybe that is it. You're saying you're advanced. I'm a data analysis too. I, I run our data ana analyst and I run data and things like that. But there are, there are you know, things that give you a little bit more control in tax lien investing. Um, being prepared for foreclosures, one, being able to initialize that foreclosure and for, and shake the money loose there, um, send it to which states go to deed auction before you get the deed to the property. Um, knowing each state's intricacies, also there's little uh, incentives like we focus mainly i live in utah but we focus mainly in florida because there's incentives there for the investor where we capitalize um yeah. there's also a ramp up period I, I tell everybody you know give it a few months and 
as you're investing, continue to reinvest and you'll create your water flow, which creates your cash flow. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, so we, we do have some things in common. Like I'm, I'm in Florida. And so every tax I've ever bought is in Florida. So there's the start. I, I do know the, the 5%, you know, bump when you buy the, the note, you get the 5% bump. Um, I have gone in and, and purchased um, some older like county held tax lien certificates so that I could really control the uh, control the process of when it kind of goes to auction. I've done that. Um, you know, it, at that point, you know, you're still probably six months, even if you filed for foreclosure on it, you're probably still six months to get your money back. Can I get it back faster? So that is a great question. So I, I understand what you're saying. Number one, um, and I'm not, I'm not controversial or being controversial, but everybody be very careful with over the counter tax liens. They're over the counter right. for a reason. They weren't sold at auction because the desire is less, it's, it's significantly less than the ones sold at auction. Um, in you, you know, the 5% secret, but you don't know the, the tax deed application secret. It sounds like to me when, regardless of what your certificate, uh, interest is stated, if it's a 0.25 up to 18%, whatever, once, whenever you file foreclosure, your certificate and it automatically in Florida triggers 18% per month, regardless of that right. initial, um, certificate. So that's the TDA strategy. I use the tax deed application. Right. Now you're asking about the six month return. Think about this. Think about it like this. Um, no, you're absolutely right. A single certificate will not redeem to, it could, I mean, I get redemptions all the time, right? But I'm in the right. ebb and flow. So I have created my waterfall. So, I'm at the moment I get redeemed on a significant or a single certificate, I immediately reinvest, right? And that's what I right. do for my clients. So then we constantly are getting redemption. So if you're looking at a single certificate performance, I believe you're looking at it the wrong way. I think it is a portfolio performance. Um, if you're wanting to create cash flow, it's going to take cash. It's not, it's not something that you can jump in with a thousand dollars and automatically just be, you know, waterfalling cash flow to you constantly. That's an expectation I think that a lot of people have, but it's just not there. Um, but I but I appreciate your candor. Um, yeah. But there is a way to create that water flow and stream of cash flow and tax liens is a way to do that. Yeah. All right, you, know, you two. Let, 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 me, let me just jump in here before, <laughs> wait, wait, before wait, you wait. two. You want to fight? <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Mark, hold on. See, now I really have to throw a curveball at Melanie. Oh, great. Okay. I got one more. Wait, 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 Scott, before, before you throw the curveball, because you two are really geeking out now. We're such on nerds. The, on, on, tax lien, <laughs> on tax lien investing. I want to just basically walk the listener through the process okay. so that we're all sort of understanding your terminology and why right. this is such an effective strategy. So, Melanie, you know, Scott's in Florida, and guess what? He's not paying his property taxes on his single family residence. Oh, shame on then, you. Then what happens? So poor Scott, and, and I tell everybody, anybody, any one of us who are not paying our property taxes, I swear it's playing Russian roulette with your property. It is a problem. So Scott, number one, that's a no-no. You should have paid your tax bill because now the following year, you are, because why? Why do we need tax, this, these property tax money? The purpose of tax lien investing and tax lien certificates is to support our police officers, our government entities, our fire departments, our schools, our parks, potholes. They have monthly budgets. They have to meet that. So back in the 1800s, they came up with the tax lien investing program that hasn't really been tweaked. And what they do is they put up a certificate for sale for an investor to come in. And the minimum bid is starting at whatever Scott owes. Uh, that's the, called the face amount. It's his tax bill. So it's his tax bill. And then it gets bid down in Florida in quarter percent increments. The higher the property is, the high, more highly desired property it is, the lower interest rate you're going to receive. But that communicates to you non-verbally that you're, you're investing on a premier property, um, the lower that interest rate is. So 
get, it goes for sale, you have a period of time in my office at Tax and Wealth Solutions, we call it a, a grace period. Um, and it's called the redemption period where you're uh, stymied a bit for having any control over the investment, but you are accruing interest on paper. Um, and you at two years in day one in Florida, you can easily initialize the, um, the uh, foreclosure and shake the money loose that way. Uh, my company buys on the secondary market, so we can foreclose immediately uh, when we get that transferred into our name because we buy outside of the redemption period. So let's just real quickly define the secondary market. So yep. Scott's, Scott's certificate has gone through the tax lien auction, correct? Correct. And let's say yep. uh, Mark's hedge fund buys his certificate. Okay, so that, go ahead, sorry. Now, so I hold the certificate, but I don't really want the asset. I, is, so then what do I do? So you're the hedge fund. So I'm so glad you said hedge fund because as many people know, and Scott, I'm sure you know, being a, a single individual entity and investor or just a single person going out there and bidding, it's, it's very difficult because it's an institutionalized. It's, so it's, a, it's monopolized by institutions uh, such as Deutsche Bank or um, Bank of America, huge hedge funds. They, they gain wealth from doing tax and investing like this. And then what happens is they're not in the business of acquisition, foreclosure, or anything of that nature. So I have a broker and belonging, and because I belong to the National Tax Lien Association and I'm a member there, then we can actually go in and purchase off that secondary market where our brokers facilitate deals with the hedge funds and sell them off to us in, I buy them in bulk. I get a small, small bulk discount. Um, and then and then splice them up between portfolio, portfolios for my clients. So the secondary market just gives us a little bit more access, right? Like people like my clients who are just regular people um, and can can capitalize utilizing you know self directed IRA money or just regular entity money. Um, it doesn't matter any wherever you want your liquid to come from. But really, I like to focus on retire retirement funds because we are a alternative asset class that can be so promising, especially for what our 401ks are doing right now. And tax and investing is recession proof. Okay. I said think, the magic words, huh? <laughs> well, well I, I think that that really gives the listener a, a really good, you know, view of the tax lien investing strategy from 30,000 feet. Now, Scott, if you want to geek out, go okay. ahead and ask now any other questions. <laughs> Let's do this. I'm, I'm Scott. about to, I'm a, look, I'm about to freak her out. I, I'm, I'm sure it. I'm sure of it, Mark. All right, Melanie, let me ask you a question. Not only am I buying it over the counter, I'm buying it on land. What do you think? Uh, what do you mean, vacant land? Just vacant land? Yeah. Absolutely. I think I would, I'm not freaked out. That's what I promote because I was raised by blue collar family that was buy, you know, the whole, Mark, the whole Mark Twain saga is buy land. They're not making any more of it. Um, I, my grandparents taught me at a very young age, how important land is. The dirt is the dirt. Um, what you get is what you, what you see is what you get. Um, I love land. And I think that inside of a, any type of investment portfolio, let's say you get acquisition on that property. If it's, you know, as long as you've done your due diligence and that you see that that land is in a development that's up and coming, um, hang on to it for five years if you need to, because that's the more that those that land around it gets saturated, the more valuable that lot gets. So a hey, good job, Scott. Right. I think you're awesome. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't freak her out, Mark. Nope. Okay. So Try Melanie, again. <laughs> the hedge, the the hedge funds don't want it though. Auction. Okay. Yeah. When you get the land at tax deed auction, what are you doing with it? So right now, in fact, so let's say you, you send it to tax deed auction, okay, um, or excuse me, you file the tax deed application. Uh, property owner, Scott, who was um, delinquent in the first place, doesn't have the funds to bring that to, fr to fruition. So before my me, the investor, gets the acquisition of the deed and takes over, it has to go to a um, tax deed auction in Florida. So it goes to auction for local real estate investors in the area. If that's not something, if it's not something that they bid on and nobody wants that, then you actually then get the deed to the property. 
Um, and what do I do with the property? So at Tax Lean Wealth Solutions, what we do is we facilitate the sell. Right now I'm working on 130 properties um, that's been acquired via probably the last eight years. Um, and I have about 130 package. We just sent out the purchase contracts today. I have a single buyer that buys them and he uh, capitalizes on that man. He comes in, he pays my clients, get, makes a little profit, he makes a little profit and they, they start the building. All right, Melanie, you answered it wrong. You're supposed to call Mark and I. Oh, dang it, um, sorry. <laughs> You, don't you know, know that, that Melanie. You, call us. you guys, it's I follow, okay. I'm I'm a follower on your Facebook, and I always I sometimes make comments on your Facebook, but very, very seldom. But I do. I should have known better. I'll call you <laughs> next right. time. It's all right. We'll forgive you. <laughs> it's okay. okay. No worries. But next time you get it, you know, a tranche of raw land, we want it. I think I. Oh, do you know what? Tisk tisk. I did contact you, Mark. I actually okay. contacted you about this package I have and you sent me to your Facebook page. That's what you did. Oh, you didn't want to get on the phone with me. Uh oh. No, that's impossible. I have the that's email impossible. in my inbox still. So. I would never do that. I'm sure oh, I forwarded it to Scott and Scott was like, no. Because I was oh, referred Mark. to you. I was referred to you by somebody. Um, I can't remember. I want to say maybe, oh, one another podcast I did. I do quite a few, but it had to be in maybe in Best Florida. I can't remember which one, but somebody referred me to you and did an intro email to us, and you were too busy to talk to me, Mark. Oh, Mark, you're killing me. <laughs> that's, that's that's insane. Now what? <laughs> I, it's hard. It's it, that's really hard to believe, but um, it's possible. It's yeah. possible. I think maybe it was a foreign language to you because they were tax deeds rather than maybe warranty or quick claim or anything like that. It could have been a foreign language. Could have been, I don't know. A lot of people that I have that are, um, and, and not to disregard your your knowledge by any means, I, I don't do that at all. But I'm just, I don't know if maybe that's what it was because you were, you were um, very receptive to me. You weren't disrespectful or anything. You just were like, okay, yeah, here, start following us here. Show the deeds to my, these people the list of deeds to these people on our Facebook page. I know, I see your question mark. I see it, but That's I see weird. It. It's weird, it doesn't after sound this, like me. After but... this meeting, I'll forward you the email. All right. Yeah. All right, sounds good. All right, so. In Nobody's in, in trouble. Nobody's in trouble, it just happened the way it was supposed to happen. It worked out well. But here you are now. I know, so. I'm so, I love this. Thank you guys. No worries, no worries. So. Melanie, oh, Scott's playing with his background now. Oh, man. Oh, I didn't um, see that. Sorry. Nice sharks, bro. Sorry, sorry, because that's... I, nice God, beach balls. I, 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 I'm sorry. I didn't mean to oh, my oh. gosh. He's, he's, he's loving the story right no, now. No, no. <laughs> you'll find out why. Like, God, I gave it away. Dog it. I'm sorry. Okay. You didn't so, see so that. Melanie, what, what's what is the happening worst? right now? I don't even know. This this podcast is devolving. Okay, what what is what is the worst advice you see or hear given in tax lien investing? Oh my gosh, that anybody can do it, or that um, people. I I see so many education formats out there that um, do the coaching and promise that they can um, get get tuition for education back in in one month and. People just fall for that trap. And I think it's just like you have to either have somebody mentor you, you have to have some sort of experience in anal analyzing data and know which data to analyze so that you're understanding your certificate performance and prediction. Um, there's a lot, there's a lot of moving parts. Scott, do you agree with that? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, I think, I mean, like there's many times where I've gone down and looked at properties uh, and when I say gone down, I mean like sit online, look at it, you know, you start to do, you got to do your due diligence, right? Like you got to know what you're buying, even if you don't get it, right? Like, so you got to do some due diligence there. And there's many times where you do the due diligence and then you either at the tax deed auction, you don't get it, or you find something that's like, ah, that's a problem. And, you know, the, the other problem with even a house, for example, is you know, you're, you're taking a snapshot in time, like right now. Okay. It could be, the house could be pristine and they just didn't pay their taxes. And you're like, Oh, that looks like a good deal. But by the time you go to, to do the foreclosure on it, which could be six months later, well, the value of that home 
could have gone down because for all you know, they set the place on fire, right? Yeah. Like you don't, you don't yes. know. Um, Next thing you know, you're like, I got this beautiful house and you send somebody out to look at it. It's like, dude, a tree fell through it. Now I got a mess on my hands. Okay. So I didn't get an asset. I overpaid for a destroyed house and I have no insurance on it. Mm -hmm. So it's not, it's not easy. It, it, it sounds easy, but yes, it that's does take a lot of work and there's risk involved in it too. At, you're you're so right, and anybody that says there's not there's not risk inside of a tax lien uh, certificate is completely not being full disclosure. So there is risk. Um, one of the things that we that we are that's really important to us is how to analyze data. We have an exit strategy that is the assessed value, and emotional distress and I call it emotional demolition happens all the time to structures. We'll get concrete in the restroom. We'll get or in the toilets. People destroy it. Um, that's why I love land. That's why I love land. It doesn't bite us in the behind as much as this of, of structured properties. And to be completely clear. There's not any, I, I very rarely have seen a white picket fence with a smiling family, you know, out in the front yard of houses. They're how, if you're, they're going to tax deed auction or to tax, um, tax certificate sale, there's some distress there in advance. Um, very rarely is it somebody just forgot to pay their taxes. However, that does happen. Once they understand that a certificate's been, you know, sold, then they'll almost immediately pay. Um, there's tax lien gamblers and things like that to play with it. But yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot of data that you need to have. And that's why I provided my company is because I wanted that concierge hand holding service and education so that they, they knew what they were going to get into. I require they get a certification through my portal before they can buy out of my inventory. They can't even buy my inventory and they, until they've gone through my, my learning portal education. That's fantastic. Fantastic. So so Melanie, why would anybody that is not, you know, in, in some, like, just like in your type of situation where, you know, there's been some type of life change and they want to start something new, you know, Scott or myself, we have a, you know, these businesses and our listeners might have full-time jobs. Why on earth would anyone want to start learning how to do this themselves when they could just deploy self-directed IRA money or QRP money to a professional and what type of yield would they look to get versus going through the, the headaches of the due diligence game of trying to learn an entire new business themselves? Uh, yeah. So let's talk about today's time, right? We are in some crisis with this COVID-19, right? Our, econ our economy is struggling. Um, there's things that are struggling, struggling in there out there that we, we don't even know yet, but we know we can see the writing on the wall, what's happening in the market and what's happening. And earlier today, when I said that tax liens are recession proof, um, we've never been busier than the last two weeks. I've never been so busy because they, unfortunately, and I, I don't even like to say this, but they thrive in a down market. Um, and that's the reason that people are calling us right now, because one thing that our 401k does for us is tuck us in at bed, tuck us in bed at night, you know, makes us feel good. But at the end of the day, when we're retiring, that bed tuck in is just a nightmare um, because we don't have enough funds that we've been working all our lives. We felt good about it up until that point of retirement. And there's people going, now what? What do I do now? Because they want to utilize that, those funds and be able to live the life they've been living. Whereas just being a straight 401k investor, playing the vol volatility of the market may not lead to that. And I believe, and I've seen tax liens personally change my life. I, I've spoken at several times. Um, it is apps. I was totally the stereotype single mother that didn't know where I was going to get the next you know meal. And I figured it out and, and took an opportunity that I got and ran with it. And so uh, tax lien investing is for people who are uh, willing to get into something new rather than um, not, you know, it's like, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Well, it's broken right now, guys. It's broken. Things are happening right now and it needs to be fixed. And this isn't a real estate um, recession. This is something different. We haven't seen this before. So I think right now ca capitalizing on tax liens is exactly where we need, you guys need to be. And alternative asset classes, of course. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, Scott and I are so thankful that we're in, in the business that we're, we're in. Right now, yeah. <laughs> um, for sure. So 
we're at that point now, Melanie, where your mentorship and has been invaluable. And I think you and Scott geeking out on, on tax liens has been extremely entertaining, but now we're going to ask you for your tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something actionable for the art of passive income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. What have you got? So I, I love the book, the Carnegie, Dale Carnegie book, How to Win and Influence Friends. Is that what I, I may be saying the name wrong, but um, it taught me how to be a good leader, I guess. That's something that I think in business that we forget sometimes as CEOs or presidents of big companies, we forget that everybody's human. Um, we forget the accountability part and that factor and anything that I've done and where I've succeeded is um, my biggest success is where I've uh, been accountable to my mistake or uh, being able to learn and grow from a mistake. That's some of the greatest and most beautiful learning. Um, I don't panic like I used to when, it, when something comes up or, I, you know, in the beginning I would panic. I'd never run a business before. As I said, I come from blue collar. Like it just became, it just became something I was accustomed to. I didn't know what to do when this or that happened. And now I learn and grow from that and make people feel important. As Dale Carnegie says, it's the most important thing we can do. It's our number one need as people. Um, we want to feel important and that, I, I think that as a leader, that's the number one thing you need to do is when you have the right team in place is, you know, make them feel important and you will have a dynasty. I believe that with my heart and soul. All right. I love it. Scott Todd, what's your tip of the week? All right, Mark. My tip of the week yeah. is this. It's in the video. It's check this out. Meeting, uh, Zoom meeting backgrounds.com. You can get like all kinds of Zoom meeting backgrounds. Like here, I'm with Katy Perry and like the sharks, you know, like. Oh my gosh. You can change it up. I don't know. Make life fun while you're working from home. Make life fun when you're on these Zoom meetings. Change Heck it up. yeah. I mean, this is extremely annoying. I got to tell you like that one. But look, man, me, me and like the, the wolf. You and Leo are buds. Me and yeah. Leo. Like, who says we can't have But Mark's real? using it too, isn't he? I see the ocean behind yeah, him. He, but I, see, he's I not, am. He's not he pretends he's one. not. He's all, oh gosh. <laughs> well, no, 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 mine are just, mine just cooler. Oh, yeah, I was going to say that too. Yeah, I mean, you know. <laughs> Mark, come on. You can't beat the sharks, man. You can't beat, look, um, I, I agree. Katy Perry is in a league of her own, and you can't beat it. the sharks. Yeah. But I now, do like my beach. One. I like your beach too. I thought about saving it. I'm going to save it. I'm going to save it for another, another podcast. Maybe that later today. That doesn't hurt but, my feelings. By, by the way, Melanie Finnegan, you're in trouble. Why? Oh, I found the email thread. Here we said, go. Here we go. It says, here it is. And it says, Jack Haas from housedudes.com. I said, Jack, thanks so much for the intro. Much appreciated. Melanie, let's talk. Please click the link below to schedule a 15 minute consultation with me. And then I did. Now it's my turn. Okay, uh -oh. now that's all I see on my okay. uh -oh. on my thread. So I'm I'm so glad that I have this. I I hope I don't eat crow, but when I do, I'm gonna own it, right? We just talked about it. Mark Pedals. Uh oh. Uh oh. I'm, I'm sitting by anxiously so waiting. Somebody, to yeah. So I re okay. Yeah. This is crazy. Okay. Hopefully it doesn't have my name on it. Let's see. <laughs> well. Hang on. No, no, no. Hang on. I, well, this she's funny. looking for it. <laughs> yeah. I, I want to thank the listeners and just remind them uh, that, well, first of all, I want to do my tip of the week, which is going to be tax lean wealth solutions.com taxing wealth solutions.com. Hopefully I'm not going to eat crow on this one and learn more about tax lien investing. I want to thank the listeners, remind them the only way, the only way we're going to get quality guests like a Melanie Finnegan from taxing wealth solutions.com is if you do three little things, you got to subscribe, you got to rate, you got to review the podcast, send us a screenshot of that review to support at the We're going to send you for free. The Passive Income Launch Kit, which is normally $97, as well as the latest wholetailing course, How to Double Your Money, 30 Days or Less. Scott Todd, are we good? We're good, Mark. Melanie Finnegan, are we good? We are so good. Sorry, I'm still going through my emails. Yes, we're exa so good. Melody, I think you didn't schedule a call with me. If anyways. I did. Okay. Anyways. Okay. 
you you can you can apologize later. No worries, but go. that's where the that's where the, for me the email string ends. Okay. Nevertheless, I want to thank the listeners and ready one, two, three. Let freedom ring. Word. All right, pretty good. Sorry, right, man. So now now we're gonna get a discount, Scott, on the next tranche. All right, yeah. thanks everybody. Hey, thanks so much, you guys. I'll forward you that email, Mark. Thanks. Uh,